We've travelled a fair bit, but Italy, well, that's never been on our radar strangely enough. Despite Si's love of history, time to do Italy at long last. Well, can you really do Italy on a cruise? We spent a week aboard Piano Azzurra to find out. Azzurra will take us from Malta up the western Italian coast to Lisbizia before diverting to Calvi on the island of Corsica before heading to Chifiki, uh, Chifiki, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, you know, the port for Rome. Then we head to Naples before returning to Valletta in Malta. So not solely Italy, but we are hoping this is the introduction to Italy we need. So how did we get on? Rolante or Oh Mio Dio? Keep watching to find out. So our journey started early with a 5am drive to Heathrow where we boarded our Air Malta flight to Valletta. This three hour flight was easy and at Valletta we collected our cases from the baggage belt, walked outside to give our cases to a waiting porter, then we boarded a coach who drove us into the city to the cruise check-in. P&O used a cool vault built into the city walls for check-in and before long you are heading out onto the dock through security and a duty free shop towards the ship. We boarded late afternoon despite leaving home early. Once aboard we went straight to our master station, got our boarding passes scanned and then headed to our cabin. This time we had booked the balcony cabin on deck 12, thanks to our brilliant travel agent Lucy. Thanks Lucy. Having only eaten breakfast and bags of sweets, we were eager to find food and drink. But which should we prioritise? Well, cocktails of course. Okay, the buffet was shut, but white rum based drinks seemed nutritious enough for the time being anyway. So when the buffet did eventually open, we scoffed a good plate full of food and stuffed our bellies before heading back to our cabin. So Sai, how are you feeling about Azura? So it's lovely to be back on board Azura here in Valletta. It's really hot, it's still about 29, 28 degrees here. Lovely to be able to sit out on the balcony. We've sailed on Azura before, so we arrived quite late in the afternoon, but there's no real need to go and explore the ship. We kind of know our way around. So on tonight, it looks like we've got a movie up on the top deck. We've got the Chronicles of Narnia movie on the top deck. There's a TV theme tunes quiz down in the Brody's pub. There's a few bands playing around the ship as well. Um, but the ship is going to be late leaving port. We've been told that Captain did an announcement saying that one of the flights from the UK is arriving late. And because there's a fireworks display apparently here in Valletta, we're going to be barred from departing Valletta for quite some time. Which doesn't mean, of course, that we can sit here and enjoy the fireworks. So we're looking forward to that later on. In the meantime, got unpacked, enjoying a beer, and enjoying the sunshine and the heat in the evening sunset. Cheers. Fireworks, that sounds fun. But first, time to reacquaint ourselves with this nine-year-old ship that we last sailed on 16 months ago. We wandered around and grabbed some drinks. Live music featured in most of the bars. A nice walk on the promenade deck was a highlight for us and on the Valletta Quayside, local dancers performed for diners and cruise passengers alike. Just wonderful. Okay, fireworks time! And we headed back to the cabin and waited patiently on our balcony. Um. That's a loud bang, but can't see anything. Okay, we are on the wrong side of the ship to see the fireworks. Drinks in the fridge, and we headed up to the top deck to watch the show, and wow, it was a wonderful display over the harbour. So those drinks in the fridge? Okay then, and we polished them off as we sailed away after the fireworks had finished. We hadn't had time to explore Valletta sadly, but we know it's a magical place and we'll be back here in a couple of months time for a special Maltese adventure. Sailing away was wonderful and we soon headed out into the Mediterranean towards Italy and our adventure had begun in style. Day two started with a cup of tea on the balcony before heading up to the buffet for breakfast. This was a sea day and our chance to relax and enjoy the amenities on board. P&O give all passengers one hour free Wi-Fi. The signal was poor in the cabin, so we needed to head to public areas to check in with the family at home. So after this, we headed up to the pool deck. The ship was full, we'd say. Public areas were very busy, but we enjoyed a game of table tennis and got some steps in as we walked around the ship. There was plenty going on. There games, dance classes, bingo, a lecture on art and various kids clubs. 
Deciding to make the most of our balcony, we returned to the cabin and took in some reading. We saw a turtle swim past us. Need to be quicker getting the phone camera ready though. Lunchtime was soon upon us. The ship felt busy on this day and every inch of deck space appeared to be taken, but we grabbed a spot in the buffet and enjoyed a chicken dinner, which was very tasty. Opting for more peace and quiet, we returned to our balcony and enjoyed a brew and got stuck back into our books. The sun came around and the good food, reading and sunshine soon brought on the Zeds, well for Sai anyway, whereas I was desperate to try out my new bottle of after sun. In the evening we freshened up ready for celebration night and we smartened ourselves up just a little. So what's the plan for tonight Sai? Well it's celebration night tonight here on Azura and it is far too hot, it's still 33, 34 degrees out there. There's absolutely no way I'm going in a tux tonight, I mean that'll just be too uncomfortable. So I take an effort, waistcoat, tie, shirt, and of course, a nice glass of wine. We're eating in the glass house tonight, so looking forward to that. We ordered some wines before we dined and took in our very fine surroundings. And so, Nettie, what have you got to drink tonight? I've got pink wine. Do you like pink wine? Pink wine, pink wine. I drink pink wine all the time. Thank you, Goldie looking Jane. Yeah. Cheers. Well, the food soon arrived and it was time for our first official foodie review. Well, Nettie, how's your food? Absolutely delicious. What we got? Um, I've just gone in, um, I've got the surf and turf, yeah. got the garlic corn, so tasty, really delicious. I've tried the ribeye steak, um, melt in your mouth, really tasty. And I've tried some of the onion rings, really crispy. I would really recommend this, really good. It's good value as well, it's not expensive either. Not, not expensive, no. And dietary requirements all catered for, yeah? They have been, yeah, yeah. especially for you. Especially for me. Pepper. Absolutely, yeah. smart. <laughs> all right, well, Fantastic. thumbs up from us. Clean plates and the food was delicious. Space for pudding, eh? So, we've gone for pudding, yeah? Yeah. What have we got? Right, we've ordered the, um, it's the British Retro Trio. And we've got the, sorry, I've just got to refer to the menu. We've got the Rosehip Arctic Roll. We've got the Bailey's Chocolate Truffle Tea Cake. And then we've got the Jammy Dodger Cornflake Tart. So, you got room for this? Not really, but it looks amazing. <laughs> we'll tuck it. We shared the puddings, which disappeared very, very quickly. And the judges scores are in, so let's start with the rose hip arctic roll with pink champagne rhubarb compote. What did you think of that? Right, well, the rhubarb compote was very tasty. The actual arctic roll, mm, I didn't think it had too much flavour to be fair. Out of five? Um, out of five I'd say two. Oh, okay, yeah. right, okay, I'll, I'll give that three, it was alright, but it was just an arctic roll. Right, yeah. Okay, moving on now, the Bailey's chocolate truffle tea cake. Well, I really like that. That was it had lots of Bailey's flavour, um, really strong chocolatey flavour. I would say probably four. Okay, I agree five. with that. It was a good, solid mm. four. It was very chocolatey. Yeah. And last but not least, the jammy Dodger corn flake tart with custard. Well, I loved that. Um, I know you didn't agree because the custard was cold. Yeah, the cold custard was a the like feature. <laughs> Um, I really like that. It reminded me of um, the cornflake cake that my mum used to make when I was um, when I was a child. Um, so it brought back loads of memories from that. Of course. Um, it was. I loved it. It was really good. I would say five. Four for me because it gets a point <laughs> deduction for cold cust cold custard. Who'd have thought? You oh. have that. In, you have that in trifles. Anyway, glass house <laughs> has been a good experience. Yeah? It was. Yeah, really cool. nice. Then we moseyed our way up to our favourite bar on Azura, the wonderful Planet Bar. Peaceful and chilled, this is a great space with views across the aft of the ship. Some more smooth wines too. We headed then down into the Manhattan Bar for comedian Steve Terry. A family friendly routine for an early evening show and plenty of smiles and chuckles too. Then out onto the promenade deck. We just missed the sunset but the residual light across the nearby island of Corsica was spellbinding and this was a lovely moment to grab a few photos and many passengers took advantage of this, helped by the friendly crew. We mooched around the various venues and most passengers seemed to have made an effort to dress up. With an early start ahead of us in the morning, we didn't make this a late night but the wine had flowed nicely and our dreams were sweet. So tomorrow we would set foot in Italy and we were getting excited. So why not check out our next video in this series where we'll explore the fantastic cities of Pisa and Florence. Thanks for watching. Supporting our channel helps us make more content like this and the easiest way to do that is to hit the like button 
and subscribe. Thanks very much.